3D printers. They've been around since the 80s, and you're probably familiar with their work. Action figures, guns, and even organs can be made using these devices. But did you know that 3D printers are now being used to construct entire houses, offices, and other buildings? That's right. Some folks say this is the future of construction and the answer to addressing pressing crises like homelessness and affordable housing. The rent is too damn high. But how will an idea as radical as printing your house work with building codes that deal in traditional construction materials and methods? And most importantly, are these structures safe? Welcome to Learn Something New by NFPA Journal. The world's first fully 3D printed building is said to be the 3D print canal house in Amsterdam, which opened as a research and design project in 2014. Since then, numerous other projects and companies 3D printing buildings have sprung up around the globe. A Texas company called Icon, for example, has printed houses in the US and in Mexico. Architectural renderings from the company envision future neighborhoods filled with rows of 3D printed homes. The way these machines work is by sucking up materials such as concrete and extruding them out of a nozzle, like a giant robotic caulking gun, forming layer upon layer of material until walls, rooms, and eventually whole buildings take shape. The machines, which typically stand no taller than a pickup truck, are pre-programmed with a design to tell them where to move next. The resulting structures are usually small and simple, little more than concrete boxes, but not always. Companies like Apis Core in Boston have made large multi-story buildings using a 3D printer. As the technology has grown in popularity though, questions over whether 3D printed structures are code compliant and safe have surfaced among fire and building safety professionals. Frankly, there isn't a whole lot of research out there to prove that 3D printed construction materials and methods create the same level of safety that traditionally made buildings do. But there is anecdotal evidence to suggest they do, or at the very least, that they can. Last fall, code officials in Austin, Texas became the first to approve a 3D printed house. Despite some minor issues with insulation, officials said the home met all of the applicable residential building codes. We're very open to the new technology becoming more prevalent in Austin, one building code official there told NFPA Journal for an upcoming story. We're willing to work with developers. Some of these developers, like Apiscore, have conducted extensive reviews of their own materials and configurations, with the goal of being able to consistently replicate the same level of safety and reliability found in traditional construction using 3D printers. If they can do that, the companies say, they can build structures approved through the alternative materials and methods provisions of codes like the IBC and NFPA 5000. Not everyone is sold though, at least not yet. I don't think the technology is there yet, nor is the comfort level using it, an architect told NFPA Journal for the same upcoming piece. And challenges extend beyond constructing just the buildings. In Austin, officials said it was a challenge to outfit the building they approved with things like electrical wiring, plumbing, and HVAC systems. Everything had to be surface mounted. Despite potential concerns and challenges, at the end of the day, 3D printed construction seems like it's here to stay. Clearly, um, 3D printing um, is, uh, is something that is going to impact construction uh, massively in the future. And with an estimated 1 billion people worldwide living in definitively unsafe informal settlements, where houses are constructed with plastic tarps and sheets of corrugated metal where fires run rampant, it's hard to argue that that's a bad thing, as long as it's done carefully. Thanks for watching. You can learn much more about 3D printed buildings and how they work with building codes in the upcoming cover story for the March-April issue of NFPA Journal. The story will be available for free online the first week in March at nfpa.org journal. If you like these Learn Something New videos, please let us know in the comments section. Maybe even pitch an idea for an upcoming episode. Like the videos, share them, and subscribe to NFPA's YouTube channel for more content like this.